Well, I ask every time I get up here, are you happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning? To feel his presence? It is such a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful time. I like it when our family gathers together. You know, I, I couldn't choose my brothers and my sisters. We were just born in the same family. I didn't choose my mom and dad. But guess what? I can choose my church family. And I choose you. It's just a delight to worship with you and feel the presence of the Lord. As we were singing that song, I, I thought, Lord, it's just going to soon all be over. I'm so human and I'm so full of, of mistakes. And I said to the Lord, <laughs> I was talking to him today, and you know, he's my father, and he understands me, understands me a lot better than I even understand myself. And I said, Lord, I've just been so burdened lately. I've just been so heavy-hearted for our country, for this coming election, for my church brothers and sisters. I've been so heavy-hearted because I don't want any of us to displease you, and I don't want any of us to miss you when you send your son Jesus back and you say it's over and I said am I the only one that, why do I have to feel like this I meet other people and they they don't seem to do any, anybody know where I'm coming from have you ever talked to the Lord why why is it me you know oh I know I know but you know I wouldn't have it any other way and I'm just ashamed of myself for the times that I haven't been there when he called me and when he, when he called my name and he wanted me to stand in that gap, I believe we're living in very peril, perilous times. I am not a political person. I've looked back over past elections and they would just barely, Brother Wesley, go across my mind. But this one has been so heavy in my heart because I truly do believe, along with some of the brighter minds of our country, that this election is going to make a difference in my children's life, in my grandchildren's life, and in my life. And we have been praying at this church. We have been praying, asking God's direction for this election. We need to pray that people's eyes will be open. And all we ask them to do is to look at God's word and vote accordingly. Vote for that person that is standing behind what God... There's three major things that I've really been praying about in this election. And I'm, I've said, God, forgive me for my lack of participation and concern in past elections, but I ask you to have mercy upon this United States of America. And I repent before you, and I, I ask you to move on this nation and move on our country. I love the United States of America. This is my country, and I am proud of my country. Somebody said, ask, what, ask not what your country could do for you, but what can you do for your country? Seems like to me it's kind of getting turned around a little bit in a lot of life. So let's pray for this election coming up on Tuesday that God's will will be done and that his purposes will be fulfilled. I love him this morning. Uh, I would like very much to make an announcement that, that it was my fault it didn't get in the bulletin because I wasn't sure what day we could. Ladies, it always falls on our shoulder to cook for the homecoming. Well, sometimes you men cook some too, but we cook for the homecoming. But we also know, I don't know how many of you know it, but um, that brother Barrett up there, he not only can run a mean mic, he runs a pretty good vacuum, and he keeps our church looking nice every week, and we appreciate that, Robert. But we need to, we need to help him a little bit this week. We need to come in and hit some of the windows and hit some of the other areas that he just doesn't get hit. So on Tuesday at 10 o'clock, if you can be here, please come out and help us. Now, in past years, I'll, I'll tell you, I've worked almost every day every week. But this old gal, I, Louise was telling me today, I just won't admit my age because coming up those steps was kind of tough this morning. But I'm having some problems that I just don't think I can work over here every day this week. So if you can come out on Tuesday and help us, we would so much appreciate it. And then Francis has us a list in the back of the things that we need for our homecoming, for our menu. 
So if you would check that and, and cite it, and uh, so we'll know and have plenty of food. We've always served people well at our homecoming, so we appreciate your help. We want to pray this morning. I feel his presence in such a wonderful way. Robert, you have a friend here today. Can you introduce him to us? Nice to have you here, Larry. Nice to meet you. And I see two precious friends come slipping in this morning. It's a delight to have you with us today. Uh, we see each other at some concerts that we go to, and I missed them last time. They weren't there. I looked, and I asked. I asked where you were. So, so delight to have you to come in and be with us today. We love you, Jim, and we love you so much. God bless you as we go to the Lord in prayer. If you have a special... All right. For those of you that are listening on the uh, Internet, Debbie just gave a praise report. She was not feeling well at all this morning, and she came, and God has touched her. And then John, you know, it's, it's nice to have a devoted husband like that. My husband married those two, I'm telling you. They better walk a straight line, both of them, or he'll get on them. <laughs> but it's such <laughs> It's, uh, it, it's a wonderful testimony. Also, I want to, my nephew that you've been praying for, my sister had a visit with him at 5 o'clock this morning. They're letting, letting her see him ever, you know, she's in intensive care. They still do have him in a coma to help him recoup. And uh, four bullets went into his body. So he's a very, very, the doctor said he's a very lucky young man. So let's pray for him, for his complete recovery. Let's pray that he'll make a decision and turn his life around and serve the Lord Jesus Christ. And also pray for Linda. She's going through a whole lot now. But thank you for your, isn't it wonderful when you can call upon the Lord? And also let's pray for the family that's involved on the other end, the one that was doing the shooting. Let's remember them in prayer that God will touch them. Oh, Heavenly Father. Through the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, I come to you this morning. I have felt your sweet presence already. Oh, so undeserving. So undeserving of your love. So undeserving of your goodness and your kindness. Oh, Holy Father, Holy Father, Holy Father. You are the Lord God, Jehovah. You are the one, the only, the true God. And we praise you for who you are. We thank you for who you are. We glory in you, Lord. We glory in you praise you. We are your people. We are called with your name. We are walk under the banner of the bloodstained flag of Jesus Christ and we serve him and his name is emblazoned on our heart and in our mind. We honor your son and we love him. Oh, Father, be with us in this service this morning. Let our lives and our hearts as we worship, let our worship be accepted to you. Let our worship be pure and holy. And let our minds not be on other things, but let us realize that this is the time that we give to our Father to honor and to lift him up. Thank you for these blessings, Lord. Thank you for the blessings in my life. I thank you for the blessing in this church. I thank you for the strength that I receive from those that I love in this church. And I praise you for them. And oh, Father, once again, once again, we bring this election before you. Oh, Father, you see what your will is, and we ask that your perfect, holy will be done. But we pray that you'll move over this nation of ours, that you'll forgive us for the sins, Lord. Forgive us of the number of babies that we've killed. Oh, Father, forgive us, Father, because we have been indifferent, and we have let politicians, and we've let men, men that are not men of integrity, we've let them get into office us because we have hidden our faces away thinking it's not really my concern but oh father help us we cry out to you we cry out to you for this election we ask you to move on the hearts of those that haven't voted we ask you to give them eyes of understanding let them hear words lord that and father move and give us a revival give us a revival in our church give us a revival in the churches 
Father, I pray for the pastors here in Zellwood. I pray as they stand in their congregation before their congregations this morning that everything they say and do will meet your approval. Oh, Father, help us to win our neighborhood. Help us to win our neighborhood. Help us to win our neighbors to the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, thank you for your healing power. Thank you for the way that you have touched the bodies of those that have been sick. And I pray for Becky this morning. Becky is our prayer lady of the week. You see her need. You see Willie. Lord, you see their needs. And I pray that you will move on their hearts today and that you'll touch and bless them. I pray for our children as they meet over in the children's church. Oh, let them feel your holy presence. Father, touch those leaders. Touch their lips and touch their hearts that they'll teach those children and they'll speak the word of truth to them, Lord. Bless our music. Bless our cantata that's coming up. Bless us as we share together, Father. Help us to bear one another's burdens. You said we do that, Lord. And you said by this shall all men know that you are my disciples. If you have love, if you have love for, love one for the other, and Lord, we desire to that. We pray for unity in this church. We pray that your hand of goodness will move over and meet every need, every financial need, every need in the family. Lord, you see the families that are hurting this morning, and you're able to move in a mighty way in their homes. You see those that are standing not knowing which direction to go in. Oh, Father, show them. Lord, show them the way. Teach them the way, Lord. Let them lean upon you, Lord, to trust you. There's financial needs, Lord. Oh, meet those needs, Lord. Oh, there's so many in our country that's out of jobs. There's so many that are living on the streets. Oh, Father, will you meet the needs? Will you touch us, Lord, that we can be a nation again that will have jobs, that will produce jobs for our men and our women and our families. Oh, Father, touch, we pray. We ask for your mercies, Lord. We call upon you for your mercies and for your love and for your goodness to be upon us. We worship and honor you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Father. Thank you, Holy Father. Thank you, Holy Father. In Jesus' holy name. In Jesus' holy name. Would you just for a few minutes think about him? Would you just for a few minutes think about his greatness? Would you think about his goodness? Would you think about how merciful he is and how kind he is? Oh, he's such a good God. He's such an understanding God. Such a marvelous God. The God Jehovah that we serve is not a God of a cold heart, but he's a God of love. He's a God that's reaching out this morning to meet every need not my will that any should perish but that all should come unto the kingdom of God oh father that's your will you sent your son you sent your son that we can have that privilege to come to you and thank you for that Lord thank you for that Lord thank you for that Lord oh I feel your presence in such a special way I feel your presence in such a special way oh move on hearts and Father, as this church comes tonight, as we come for this special meeting that our pastor and my husband has called, oh, let us be right in the middle of your perfect will. Oh, as we come to this solemn assembly tonight, as we come as a church body, a body that cares and loves, help us, Father. Help us, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. I tell you, church, when I feel his presence like I feel him right now, I don't know what to do, and I don't know what to say, but he's here. He's an awesome God, and he's here. He's here right now. His presence is in this building, and he sees us and hears us. And I just, I just want my life to be what he'd have it to be. We're going to receive our offering right now. If our ushers will come. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, God touch Nadine and the Methodist Church today. God touch this pastor today. Oh, God touch our Baptist pastors today.
Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross.
over me when my faith is strong. Let the peace that passes all sense his divine presence knowing that he is in this room right now to me it would be a good time for the snatching away to occur wouldn't it be great why this whole building would just be it it would be vacant that's a good word Michael it'll be vacant Tonight, if God does, Terry, uh, we're, we're going to have a special service. I've called a special service, been announcing it for weeks. I would like for everybody in the church to be here tonight. We're going to have a solemn assembly. Now, you may not know what a solemn assembly is. I'm going to explain it tonight. There has been in many, many thousands of years in the past, solemn assemblies coming up on even to today. We're going to meet tonight, and we're going to have a special, special service. Would you please 
be here. And bring your books. Everybody have a book? Bring your book tonight. We're going to be using these books. 40 days of seeking God. We've been seeking God for 40 days. In fact, I've been seeking God for most of my life. But we've been especially going through this book. And I ask for you to be here for this special service tonight. I have been speaking on Sunday mornings on special subjects. I, I have two subjects going, and we left one temporarily on the churches in Revelation, Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and the Laodicean churches. I'm going to come back to that, but we were in a certain period of time that I uh, went from that, and now I'm talking about the attributes of God. I don't know about you, but since we have begun in this series, I'm learning more about God. You might say, well, hey, you're a minister. You should already know all of those things about God. No, I'm still learning. I'm just like you. I've been the student of the Word for most of my life, but I'm still learning. And, and uh, uh, three Sundays ago, I spoke to you about the first attribute on these that I passed out to you, and that is God is holy. How many of you know that God is holy? Would you just take a moment and would you honor Him and would you say, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty? Would you say that three times? Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Now I want you to think about something. You and I just said it three times. But as I am continuing to speak to you, going on in heaven right now, are those saints, those four living creatures, they are saying, Holy, 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 Holy. Oh, and, and, and it's powerful. It's like the voice of many waters going up, exalting the name. Of Jehovah God. I also spoke to you on the subject of God is love. You, you, you see, we don't exalt God just because He is loving. He is. But God is love. That's what God is. He's love. God loves you. God is love. And then last Sunday I talked to you about God is good. He's absolutely, independently, unchanging good. He's, he's, he, he's all of that. And, and today I want to talk about God is all Powerful. He's all powerful. How many of you feel very powerful this morning? Yeah, we are in Him, aren't we? But, but we have limitations in our power. But God is all powerful. And I'm going to show you that according to what God's Word tells. Us. You see, 
We exalt God because His power is without limit. God's power is without limit. There is a limit to the power that man has. With our great military, and we have the greatest military in the world, but you see, we are limited in what we can do. But God's power is without limit. The Bible said, with Him all things are possible. Some things possible? Uh -uh. With God, all things are possible. How many of you really believe that? Why don't you say it one time? With God, all things are possible. And so, beyond what you have need of and can't grasp this morning, God has that need fulfilled for you. He can take care of it. Not only can He, but He will. God will supply and take care of all your need according to His riches in glory. When, when we talk about God's all-powerfulness, we are actually talking about the omnipotence of God. Listen to Psalm 62 and verse 11. God has spoken once. Twice I have heard this, that power belongs to God. Power belongs to God. And, and if you have your Bibles and looking at it, look back up to verse 7. And, and I don't have that for you on the overhead, but it says, In God is my salvation and my glory. In God is my salvation and my glory. He is the rock of my strength. God is a refuge for us. He is a refuge for us. And, and then in the next verse, he said at the end of it, Salah, which really simply means stop and think about this. Take, take a few moments and and, and let it sink in. God has spoken, and twice I've heard this, that all power belongs to God. Psalm 62, verse 11. And then verse 7, in God is my salvation and my glory. And I want to take you through Scripture and let you see that salvation is from God. And it is of God. It is impossible for man to be saved except he go to the cross of Calvary. Except through the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, I could talk about a lot of things when I talk about the omnipotence of God. But this morning when I look at salvation. This shows us just how great our God is. So, so we have a lot of 7-11s around the country, but this is God's Psalm 62, 7 -11. You know, just read it sometime and, 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 and search it out. Over in the book of Matthew, chapter 19, I, I want you to see uh, 
what the Bible says here. Chapter 19 and, and verse 26. But Jesus looked at them and he said to them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. All things are possible? Well, what is the sitting here? The Bible said that there was a young man that came to Jesus. He was a very rich man. And he said to Jesus, Good master, uh, what can I do that's good to uh, inherit eternal life? What, what, what can I do? And, and, and you know, Jesus said to him, that you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall bow, not bear false witness. And he talked to, to him about the, the commandments that, the, uh, that, that Jehovah gave to uh, Moses on Mount Sinai. And, and, and he, said, he said, you shall do this. And the young man looked at Jesus and said, you know, I've done this all my life. I've been a good man as far as keeping the commandment. I, I have. And then Jesus saw in him something. He said, what I want you to do or what you should do is to take all of your possessions and sell them and give them to the poor. Jesus knew he had a problem. You, you see, we have to look at all that God has blessed us with is not being ours. It's something that God has given to us. He's loaned it to us for us to enjoy while in this life. It belongs to Him. And I could dwell here a little while, but, but let me go through this to you. When Jesus told him to do this, the Bible said that, he went away sorrowful. He was downhearted, very sorrowful, and he walked away. And the disciples came to Jesus and said, Jesus, he, he, he said, uh, uh, what, what then can we do to be saved? What can we do to be saved? Have you ever thought about this? And uh, Jesus said uh, up here, he said, you know, he, he said, it's easier for the camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Wow, that's pretty powerful, isn't it? They say there's a place over in Israel that's called a... a a, 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 a camel's eye or the eye of a camel. And you cannot get a camel through this very narrow place. But even if you were talking about a needle. Now, now to look at this, it would be impossible. But is it impossible for a rich man to be saved? No, that's not what he's saying. If you let those things govern you, if you let earthly things control you, then that becomes a god to you or an idol god. But Jesus said there is a way. With Christ, the rich man can get through the eye of a needle if he goes through Calvary. Every one of us goes through Calvary. And when we go to Calvary, then God, He's not against people having riches. Abraham and Job, two very, very rich men in the Old Testament, and many others. There were people who had plenty that helped take care of Jesus during his earthly ministry. Remember, Jesus had a habit of stopping by certain homes and, 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 and
and they would feed he and those 12 big guys that were fishermen and tax collectors or whatever they were. Can you imagine sitting down to dinner one day and here comes 13 big guys and they're ready to eat? Well, th there were some folk that had funds, but they thanked God for them and they didn't serve them and, and, and they give it to God. That's what God is saying. Calvary makes a difference. After Calvary, God has further instructions for us. But no matter who you are. Jesus was saying here, he had not gone to the cross yet. With men, this is impossible. We cannot save ourselves. But with him, all things are possible. You see, God was getting ready to make a way that the rich, the poor, the, the bond, the free could have freedom from sin. Oh, they could live for God. Jesus said with men, it's impossible. You can't lift yourself up by your own bootstraps. You have to come my way. God's way is the way we go. We go to Calvary and through Calvary's cross and through the blood of Jesus Christ we are saved and we are then made ready for the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. So you see, with men these things are possible. Had he not gone to the cross, we'd still be lost. Nobody could help us. With men it's impossible. But with God all things are possible. Look over to Luke chapter 1. And the verse here is verse 37. And again, it said, For with God nothing is impossible. And what we have here in this setting at that Gabriel comes down and he announces Christ birth. Oh, that was a thrilling day. All of a sudden, it was business as usual, hustle and bustle throughout that time. And all of a sudden, Gabriel came down and intervened. And it's going to be business as usual when there's going to be another intervention and I believe that's getting ready to happen at any time. But let me say, here is Gabriel told Mary that she would conceive being a virgin by the power of the Holy Spirit. And she would have a child. And his name would be Jesus. Oh, this is powerful, isn't it? Here I see the omnipotence of God. How could this happen? There is no way that anything like this could happen. It's the power of God. She was a young virgin. Never had it happened before, and it could not happen. But all things are possible with God. And the Bible said, for with God nothing will be impossible. And, and, and then she, she worshiped God. And down in verse 45, Blessed is she who believed, for there will be fulfillment of those things which were told her from the Lord. And I like what, what Mary said about it. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior, for he has regarded the lowly type, state of his maidservant. For behold, henceforth all generation shall call me blessed. And he said, For he who is mighty has done great things for me. 
and holy is his name, and his mercy is on those who fear him. From generation to generation, he has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty, and he is a help. His servant Israel, in remembrance of his mercy, he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his seed forever. This is the omnipotence of God. God looked upon the creation that he had created. And now he's making provision for their disobedience that we can come to Him and that we can be saved. I want you to see Revelation chapter 19 and verse 6. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, as the sound of many waters, and as a sound of a mighty thundering, and they were saying, Hallelujah! For the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Oh, I want you to see something. Over in the book of Revelation chapter 3, at the end of the chapter, you don't see the church after chapter 3. The church has been raptured. They're gone. Starting with verse 4, they're in heaven. And now over in chapter 19, the church is mentioned again. I see the church again. In Revelation chapter 3, Smyrna, Pergamos, Thyantaria, Sardis, Philadelphia, Laodicea, the churches. And here, Revelation 19, I see the church again. Where are they? I want you to know that Revelation chapter 19 and verse 6. Verse 4 said, And the 24 elders, those represents the bride of Christ and the Old Testament saints. And the living creatures, they fell down and worshipped God who sat on the throne. And they were saying, Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Can you imagine billions of people and angels crying out in unison? Hallelujah. Holy, holy, holy. Like the sound of a mighty thunder. Like the sound of many waters and I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude said for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth and you know what happens now when this vast gathering was there God on his throne and there sat Jesus sitting on the throne and the robe or the, the, the train of his robe filled the temple and the supper was made ready and God in all of his power is going to put on a meal like you have never seen before. We're getting ready to have homecoming. 
next Sunday. These ladies have already said they're going to have a meal prepared for us. And you want to come with a hearty appetite. In fact, if I was you, I wouldn't need anything all this week so that come next Sunday morning you could feel up. Oh, I want you to know. But this meal is nothing in comparison to when uh, we say hallelujah for the Lord God Almighty reigneth. Hallelujah. And Jesus will say, sit down and enjoy the blessings of the Lord. Hallelujah. And a table spread farther than the, uh, the eye can behold and we are sitting enjoying with him the marriage supper of the Lamb. I don't know. I'd almost just dance thinking about it. Can you imagine how you're going to feel? You say, preacher, when is this going to happen? I don't know. But let's suppose that Jesus just calls us all home today. It's going to be within the next seven years after that somewhere. I don't know just the exact place God's going to put it. You've never seen a table spread like his yet. And I want you to, the decorations have been so great every year. And the ladies have done a marvelous job. And the guys come out and help what they can in cleaning. And they've called for the clean, cleaning up time here. Thank you for doing that. Oh, but up there, you, you don't have to worry about that. I, I'm, I'm talking about a God who is omnipotent. I'm talking about a God who will just speak. He, he, he spoke. I, I, yeah, you know, we, we have a lot of thrust when, when we send a, a shuttle into outer space. There's a lot of power involved in that. You know all about it. That doesn't even come close. You, you see, that's the power of man. God took the sun that's so many times bigger than the earth and he just put it in outer space. In fact, he made outer space. He, he, it's, it's there. And, 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 and I want to show you some things that, that, that our, our omnipotent God did. I'm going to be closing with this. So if you'll get us some some uh, music here, uh, I want to I want you to see his power. But but the greatest thing that ever happened is that God give us Jesus and Jesus give His life, and now we have abundant living. You see, we fear God because of His omnipotence. It should be a holy fear. Y you see, all power in heaven, every source of energy, every drop of running water, every ray of light, every degree of heat, every motion of man and animal. That's the power of God. He holds the secret to every calorie, every function, every voluntary and involuntary muscle. The table of elements is his servant. He told the chemicals which ones could mix and which ones could not. He told them what would happen when combining 
two hydrogens and an oxygen. He told the atom what to do when it was split. I'm talking about God. He is over, over every breath of wind. He's over every tide of the sea. You see, he's over every ray of the sun. All of energy serves him. He is the source of light, and he's also the source of life. There is no life without him. It is by Him and through Him that every living creature breathes and by Him every telestial and celestial being continues to exist on earth, in the heaven. It's through and by Him that we all live and we have our being. You see, He is the maker of all things. He's the designer of all things. He's the maintainer of all things. You see, nothing that exists does so without His permission. Everything that He made, it exists. It exists, and it does not exist without His permission. He gives the Son permission to come up every morning. It hadn't failed us since He put it there. There's coming a time when He's going to not give that Son permission again, but we won't need it then. I'm talking about the omnipotence of God. He's the one that holds your and my breath cord in his hand right now. He gives life. You do not live unless he gives it. You see, he is all in all. I'm talking about the omnipotence of God. Thank you, Father. For letting the sun smile on us today. I've greeted several people and said, boy, it's a wonderful day. And if you're breathing this morning, God's causing that to happen. Those lungs are just not producing oxygen without a purpose. God's purpose is for you to live and for you to go about worshiping Him. God owns it all. God controls it all. And we exist because God created us. Let us always be grateful for that one very, very great thing. Would you stand? I'd like to say this, and I jotted this down in my notes. I felt 